avoid any contamination, we can either wash our hands very carefully with water, with soap and water, or we can wear a surgical glove to avoid carrying viruses from our fingers across onto, the, onto these milky plants. We have to prepare the surface of the leaves by applying an abrasive which creates very small wounds in the leaf that would be applied in inoculum and this allows the virus to enter through the cell walls into the contact with the plasma membrane of the cells. We use a very finely ground carborundum powder which is applied like this. So there's a very light coating of this very fine mesh, very fine finely ground up carborundum. The inoculum now, is, we've just prepared that, we use that as the sap extract. We dip our finger, we dip the finger into the inoculum, and that is enough inoculum to apply to leaves. Then we simply wipe the leaves three to four times with the inoculum. We inoculate up to three leaves which are expanded. This is Nicodiana clevelandii, this is Nicodiana glutinosa. And we apply the inoculum to whichever plants you want to inoculate. So all we have is just a light coating of liquid inoculum on the leaf and that rapidly dries off. But as it, after it, after the inoculum has been applied, the virus enters a number of cells and uncoats and starts its replication cycle. After about, we first of all then have to make sure that we label the plants with the, the virus and the date so that we know how long, when we should come back to check the symptoms. Symptoms usually take, we have two types of symptoms. We have some which are local symptoms which can appear in three or four days and here is an example when a virus is not mechanically transmissible uh, we can should still show demonstrate that it's transmitted we can transmit the disease symptoms using a method called patch bark grafting grafting is a method where we take a piece of tissue from an infected plant and apply it to a susceptible other spe other plant of the same species and if we cut the tissue directly, the cambium of the tissue from the infected plant can then match up with the cambium of the recipient plant, and then the virus can be translocated across from that patch into the recipient plant and infect from that grafting site. So what I'm showing here is the, the virus source. So this plant is now showing mosaic symptoms. I'm now going to take a patch of tissue from the stem of this plant. So I'm going to cut into the vascular bundle, vascular ring. I'm now going to cut down parallel with that and then cut at an angle a small patch. So we have now a patch of tissue like this which has a little notch at the bottom. All we have to do now is take the recipient plant, prepare a place on the stem of about the same diameter. We just have to remove a few leaves so that we have it can work freely here. So I now simply cut a piece of tissue out from the recipient plant with approximately the same dimensions as the piece I've taken from the source plant. I'm going to discard that and then place that piece of tissue from the infected plant there. That is often held by capillarity. There's enough moisture left there to hold that piece of tissue there. And then I tie it on with a waterproof tape. We don't, we can use various kinds of tape, but plastic tapes and um, rubber, rubber strip also are very useful. But we simply wrap the tape around the stem, cover the patch so the patch is held firmly up against the vascular bundles and the cambium, parts of the cambium of the recipient plant. 
and then in a few days we will see symptoms appearing on the top of the recipient plant as a result of the virus translocating from this inoculation site to the to the healthy recipient plant. So here we've tied it off. The patch is now inside there. It is not it can't dry out because the moisture is contained. The virus can now translocate from infected cells into adjacent healthy cells of this new host, start to multiply and then eventually enter the phloem and be translocated up and down the stem of the plant. So with a plant like this we would normally trim it off so that when the new growth comes from the axles here we would look for symptoms on this new growth. Now this is a technique we can use with plants which have or dicotyledonous plants which have um, vascular bundles but unfortunately we can't use this technique for monocotyledonous plants where we have parallel venation. But this is a method where we can transmit viruses which are contained in certain tissues such as the phloem but don't actually get into the, the leaf in the sap and we extract the sap. And so this is a better method for ensuring that we can get transmission of a symptom even when we, when we cannot get it with mechanical inoculation. So these are two standard methods we use for transmitting viruses in a virus glass house. Firstly, mechanical inoculation. Secondly, grafting transmission. In this case, we call it patch bark transmission because we've taken a patch of bark from the donor and placed it on the recipient. There are other methods which you will see in notebooks, in textbooks and the literature showing different methods for doing this, but this is a standard method we use and it simply allows us to confirm whether a virus symptom, a virus-like symptom, is transmissible. The principle about diagnosis of viruses is that we need to show that we can transmit a symptom from a symptomatic plant onto a healthy plant. If we cannot transmit that symptom, we then have to say, well, the symptom is possibly due to some other cause, such as nutrient deficiency, or lack of water, or some insect damage. So in virology we have to have methods that allow us to transmit a symptom from one plant to another. And these are examples of these of two methods that we use on a regular basis. Of a plant which was inoculated four or five days ago, and we can see some yellow specks appearing on this on this inoculated leaf. This is an example of a chlorotic local lesion, but the virus replicates here and causes yellowing in the cells which are damaged but then it migrates into other cells and travels down the veins into other parts of the plant and eventually reaches these new young leaves and you can see that these leaves are now developing a mosaic developing yellow patches and this is what we call a mosaic. On older leaves sometimes we can see that the virus is moved into the veins and we can see yellowing of the veins which is usually an event which precedes the development of the mosaic. The mosaic usually starts to show after about 10 or 12 days. In this case it's quite quick but then that symptom is retained in all these leaves until they senesce and drop off and all the new young leaves as they emerge will also show these symptoms. So that is the inoculation procedure.